Hey, it's Grant. Today the video we have is uh, me doing some Hema sparring with my friend John. We're doing Highland Broadsword, so of course I want my kilt. So I'm the guy in the green kilt. It's the McLean of Dewart Hunting Tartan uh, with the black fencing mask. I have a, uh, I have a synthetic trainer and then uh, my friend John there in the basketball shorts has lacrosse pads and uh, he has a rattan and leather sort of single stick that we use for basket deposit training. So I come in with the guard of St. George and I repost there after he comes into a strike. Um, then I go to my uh, inside on point position, I go for a strike to his uh, sword arm. He pulls back though, so I don't quite. I was planning on just clipping him with a sort of tippy cut, but I don't quite get him. He goes in for a. Uh, something there I parry. So here I put the, the sword on my shoulder, I, I feint a cut to his head, and then I draw back it short, so he presents his blade, then I go over and throw a thrust. So here going with the door, guard of St. George again, um, or hanging guard as it's called as well. So here I go in a point position, I, uh, yeah, he get, he cuts me on the hand there. Going to my hanging guard again. Hanging guard is very common position, in Highland Bronze Sword, uh, but also lots of saber position, saber positions are really any um, weapon with a lot of hand protection. It's one of the advantages. You can hang there and your hand is protected. So there he goes in for a thrust and he catches me on the arm even though I parry. He just engages right in time to get around and hit my arm. So here I'm coming with a hanging guard again. Same old, same old. He cuts, I parry drawing back, trying to figure out what I want to do and how I want to make it happen. Ah, good. Good body. I parry there and I catch his hand. Nothing really happened there. And then, yep, he goes in for a thrust, I parry it, and then I cut it, the, the arm. He left it out extended for too long. And so that's why I was able to catch that arm there with that strike. So after that little cutting, cutting exchange, I was able to get the just the right angle where it came right straight down on top of his, his helmet there. So there, I tried a big uh, ranging C-cut over his head, so it, it was a, sort of like a feint to his head, but I went over, and I wanted to circle around to the backhand side and go for his leg, but he ended up uh, knowing, you know, seeing that, and then he went right for my head as I went for his leg, and I didn't step out of the way in time. So there he went for his thrust again, then left his arm out for too long, so I was able to just take the arm out, cut it, after I parried the thrust. So there's a cutting exchange there where I ended the thrust. He grabbed the blade, but I was able to turn it, get it out, and then cut right to his blade arm. Yeah, sorry about the camera. It was really windy, so even though I had it on the stand, it was a quite shaky frame because of the way the wind was blowing it. So that's just me and him discussing what had happened there because he asked a question about what had happened. We also didn't know who had won that pass, so we were discussing what had happened for that purpose as well. <laughs> so come with my outside leg position there. I cut up, and uh, when I came around, he managed to get me right in the shoulder. So good timing, John. Yeah, I'm demonstrating what had happened to him, so he understood. Then I, uh, I actually noticed that one of the, uh, the wind was blowing away one of the, uh, one of the empty bags, because it had didn't have the equipment in it. So I, I went and got it, so it wouldn't blow so far. I waited down, bow again, and then we, uh, or we salute rather, we salute again. Then I go in. He goes in for a thrust, I cut down on it. Now I squat real real, real low. I'm in, I'm trying to uh, 
get him to adopt the same leg position so that I can faint high and then go for a leg. He goes in for a thrust and I end up getting him right on the hand. He's on his big old hockey glove there and inside the basket hill. So there I, I parried aside one of his cuts and I managed to cut right down on his helmet. So we're on point there, some pretty good point work here. I run in for the thrust. I would go in for the grapple. He, uh, he, he controls my blade hand, but I'm able to maneuver around and do some false edge cuts to the top of his head. Some of those are flat, though, so not all of them would have really you know, created damage. Some more point work here from a very long distance. This is becoming very m much more rapier-like, sort of Tybalt-like actions. But uh, eventually we're going to get back to real, actual, you know, broadsword, broadsword stuff. Cuts, counter cuts, stuff like that. Slipping the leg, lots of slipping the front leg. So here, we're both looking for a point control. Even at that long distance, we're looking for the angles. I have my hand up there just to sort of counterbalance. It's like a small sword pose. Or much more, you know, reminiscent of modern Olympic fencing. I find coming under there is a really good way to uh, transition into the hanging guard. Oh, still keeping your sword on protected. Bringing it, bringing the right hand back to your left shoulder and coming under like a downward cutting motion, rising up into it. So I'm, I'm in that guard. He's filling around the point, so I uh, decide to change, and I end up swiping a, his blade aside and going right for the head, because he gave me the the space in there before I had the time to do it. It's right here getting into some of our last exchanges. I think he caught me on the sword out there, right in the forearm. Not sure, though. I parry there, I try to... Yep, there you go. Got him. So the first exchange there, I, I tried to... Uh, I tried to get him on the af right after the parry. And he ends up capturing the blade, but I... Uh, I made contact and I ripped it out, sort of like a draw cut motion. So even though he had captured my blade, I was able to win the passing exchange because I executed the draw cut. Then I'm explaining to him how I did that and how to, how he could do it. So I'm closing in the grappling range. Didn't really work out. Not very effective. So then he does this, this uh, point work thing where he brings the uh, I was adjusting my spore in there. So we're both in hanging guard. I'm trying to uh, get him to raise his blade up too much so I can come underneath the thrust there, but he didn't take the bait. Salute again. There I run through and I try to take him down. He ends up snapping my head down though and uh, breaking my posture so I can't generate much power from there. But uh, I'm determined to get the grapple. It's my favorite thing to do. You can probably tell that by uh, <laughs> the other content on my channel. So he ditches a sword there, but I'm able to come in with a large outside trip, and I uh, go knee on the belly and put my blade right in his throat. So there you are. That's my friend John. I've been training Highland Broadsword for like off and on three years. He just joined me in the last six months, so he's been doing pretty good so far. Ditch the sword. Have a good night, guys.